So during the flight, there was a moment where the pilots were trying to figure out how their transponder worked. They were told to put in a new squawk code and press the ident button so that the controllers can easily see where they are on the radar. The cockpit voice recorder recorded one of them asking how to ident with this transponder, further proving they were unfamiliar with the systems of this aircraft. Mm -hmm. It was also found during the flight the transponder was set to standby mode. Oh. So the Sanipa's best theory on why the transponder was turned off is because it was accidentally set to standby while one of the pilots was trying to use the flight computer for another purpose and because they didn't know how to use the equipment, it was set to standby on accident. Uh. And when the transponder shut off, the traffic collision avoidance system shuts off so they weren't able to see that another plane was coming towards them and the Boeing couldn't see that they were coming because their transponder wasn't transmitting the signal. Oh. So there's this system in planes uh, that's called TCAS. I believe it's the Traffic Alert and Collision Avoidance System is what it stands for. Uh huh. And TCAS is a system that should have prevented this here. So anytime, let, let's say you're flying a plane and another plane starts to get a little too close, your TCAS will go off and alert you and let you know about it. What is a little too close in a plane when you're talking about a thousand miles? There's different thresholds for different sizes of planes. Uh, off the top of my head, I want to say that TCAS will alert you between four and six miles of distance. It'll let you know that there's another plane out there. Okay. And the like that kind of alert, it'll just say like traffic, traffic. And you, you'll look and you'll see there'll be like a little indicator showing uh, where the plane is, what their altitude is, and whether they're descending or climbing. Okay. So it's pretty, I was gonna, that was my next question is like, how do you know which direction to turn? <laughs> you know, because that's the other half of it. So what I just described there is the traffic alert portion uh -huh. of it. It's also a collision avoidance system. So the other side of it is if the two planes are continuing on a route where they're going to intersect with each other, that's when the collision avoidance kicks in. And the TCAS will tell one plane, climb. And it'll tell the other plane, descend. Oh. And it coordinates between the two planes. That way they both move in a direction where they don't hit each other. That, that's why this is this is a bit of a frustrating incident. Because if the transponder and uh, TCAS have been working on the or had been turned on in the Embraer, this would never have happened. Yeah. There's also some more underlying issues that we're about to get to here. The crew also thought they would be clear to fly at flight level 370 for the entire route. However, their flight plan consisted of a descent to flight level 360 and then later an ascent to flight level 380. However, according to the flight plan, they were supposed to be at flight level 380 at this point of collision. So they were not at the correct altitude. They were oh. supposed to be at 38,000 feet when they thought they were cleared at 37,000 feet. So they were flying at 37,000 feet. They were in the wrong lane. They're in the wrong lane. Uh, there were also problems with air traffic control during the flight. While they were being handed off between controllers, the controller for Sector 5 did not inform the controller for Sector 7, nor the pilots of the upcoming flight level change on the flight plan. The controller for Sector 7 was relieved by another controller, and he told this new controller that the plane was at flight level 360, which is incorrect. Uh, the next time air traffic control tried to contact the Embraer, they were unsuccessful. It turns out the crew were using a frequency that was in their chart, but that frequency was not available. The crew and air traffic controller were on two different frequencies, it seems. So when the controller then handed the plane off to the Amazonic Center, he did not inform them that they had no radar or radio contact with the plane, and he told them that the plane was at flight level 360. Did uh, the pilots on the plane know that their radar wasn't working because of the, the system being down? No, they didn't realize that uh, their transponder was set to standby. And I, I want to give one other note here. So we, we've talked about how this plane was not flying at a correct altitude and you know there were all these chances for this to be caught and it wasn't caught. There's another general rule of thumb that was broken here that also led to this incident. Typically, any flight that's eastbound flies at an odd flight level and any flight that's westbound flies at an even flight level. The Embraer was flying northwest bound and the 737 was flying southeast bound. So just using this rule of thumb, the Embraer should have known they should have been at an even flight level, not at 37,000. Okay, so they, yeah, that's just like basic. That's why even their flight plan consisted of them descending to 36,000 and they were supposed to later climb to 38,000. Okay. Even numbers. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes so much sense. Right. That's like, oh, the systems are down. Well, 
you're going this direction. Yeah. Yeah. Fly it in. Fly it in even altitude, or fly it in odd altitude. It's just if nothing else, you're supposed yeah. to follow that just to help avoid this. Okay. So on December 10th, 2008, uh, Sanipa issued their final report. They said that the air traffic controllers contributed to the accident by originally issuing an improper clearance to the Embraer and not catching or correcting the mistake during the handoff to Brasilia Center. And there were also errors in the way the controllers handled the loss of radar and radio contact. They also concluded that the Excel Air pilots contributed to the accident with their failure to recognize that the transponder was switched off, therefore disabling the collision avoidance system on both aircraft and the overall insufficient training and preparation. The NTSB was also investigating this incident, and the NTSB had similar conclusions, but they disagreed that the pilots of the Embraer were at fault and that both flight crews were acting properly, but were placed on a collision course by air traffic controllers. What do you think, Gus? Uh, I think that the pilots were at fault. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, based simply on what that last little bit of information I gave you, they should have been flying at an even altitude. If you enjoyed that episode, that was just a small snippet from one of our episodes of Black Box Down. You can click the link down below me to see all of them, experience them for them for yourselves. Uh, while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. That way you can keep up to date anytime there's a new Black Box Down episode out. Animated or not.